But I remember making the comment on the Inquisition update that Shimon Peres had deeded Temple Mount to right. the Va to the Vatican. And, that's, and you broke into my program and said you wanted to see proof of that. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Your, yeah. Understanding your responsibility as uh, the owner of First Amendment Radio, I uh, scrambled to come up with that proof. And it was Joel Bainerman and Barry Shamish, and I'm very much grateful to both of them, and even Eric John Phelps, who reported it. And it's true. Well, Vatican, in, a, in a court of law, we don't really have proof yet. But I felt we're impressed. certainly seeing the evidence of it now. Right, and it would be difficult Absolutely. for anyone to do. It would be difficult for anyone to poo-poo or naysay. No, that's uh, over. Yeah. There's no poo-pooing yes. or naysay going on for those that that's want right. to investigate. That's right. Facts on the ground, observable facts on the ground today, that the papacy now is a the, a main power broker in Jerusalem calling for a sovereign enclave over which the Vatican or the papacy will rule in old Jerusalem, in East Jerusalem. And this can be nothing but the fulfillment of Rome's phony futurist attempt to create the, a 70 week of Daniel and uh, the Pope is going to eventually, this is my assertion and I know you agree with it, the, the Pope is eventually going to be crowned king in Israel. He's going to become a Messiah figure in Israel. Well, as I was saying, Tom, you know, several years ago, I stepped out in faith, you know, feeling impressed by the Holy Spirit that this was the truth and this was going to happen even without evidence. And I usually don't do things like that. I usually wait till I have evidence. But if the Spirit moves you, you have to go with the Spirit. So... Anyway, so now these several articles have popped up here verifying from other sources. And, I mean, there's a reality. It is shaken and it is moving. So all of the things that we've been talking about are now coming to the surface as they have to. Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Today is Friday, March 15th, 2013, and I'm Darko. All right, I'm just going to continue here. I'm going to cover the pulp. And that's the news for this first uh, video post. And the second, we'll get into all sorts of different stuff, including globalism, the new world orders it's put, uh, and how it's affecting people's lives globally. And, of course, eugenics is part of that. This video we're watching, Second Vatican State to be established in Jerusalem. You can go in there and check it out, watch the whole video. Police to restrict Muslims' entrance to Temple Mount. Information about plans to cause disruptions after Friday prayers lead police to restrict entrance to Jerusalem site to men over 50 and women. So they decided to restrict the entrance of Muslim worshippers to the Temple Mount on Friday following reports of planned disruptions after prayers. Statement said police will take a firm hand against any attempt to disrupt the order. We have Al-Azhar seeks closer ties with new pope. Says the 1,000-year-old seat of Sunni Islam learning yesterday said it wanted better relations with the Vatican after years of acrimony. On Wednesday, an Argentine cardinal uh, was elected to succeed Benedict. As most of you already know, he chose the name Francis. So, says Benedict's eight-year tenure was marked by scandals and controversies. So, including turbulent relations with the Muslim world. Says we're hoping for better relations with the Vatican after the election of the new pope, says the advisor. But the new pope's charismatic reputation and relatively progressive political views have already stirred up expectations of change. You keep hearing that change, kind of like Obama. Pope Francis reaches out to Jews. Goes on and says, like his predecessor, Pope Francis reached out to Rome's Jewish community at the very start of his um, pontification, uh, pledging to continue to strengthen the increasingly close ties to Catholics and Jews. In an interview Friday with the AP, uh, they said that the dialogue between Catholicism and Judaism was complicated, but added that the new Pope's background gives me trust and hope that relations will continue to improve. Now, this is uh, some interesting information here in this first video. Uh, it says here, as he was known before he became Pope, this Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio showed as Buenos Aires Archbishop an inclination to expand interfaith outreach to Islam and Judaism. So it made efforts to further close the nearly 1,000 year stranger with the Orthodox churches. So this is the thing. Um, 
right now it's always been about Zionists in the middle, bas you know, basically Judaism, uh, using, pitting these two against each other, you know, of course using Christians and Catholics, um, and Sunni Muslims even, uh, these terrorists that quote, hate Israel and all that, they're actually working for the Zionists, which is crazy, just like Christians uh, and Catholics in America that go over and spill blood in the Middle East for these uh, Zionists and the uh, protocols of elders of Zion and that, uh, they look at them as, as tools to be used by these people. So it's not a joke, it is real. And um, it's funny though, because we're talking about an interfaith and outreaching and stuff like this. We're talking about the, the ushering in of what Pike was talking about, uh, Albert Pike, a Mason, about uh, uh, merging all of these religions into one. That's part of this, this, uh, this new order. So it's kind of spooky. Thank you for joining our broadcast already in progress. As you know, Pope Benedict has resigned. The question is, who is going to get the nod for the top job? Joining me now, chaplain of the Colbert Nation, Father Jim Martin. Father Jim, thanks so much for joining me. Father Jim, were you shocked this morning when you learned the Pope would be resigning? I was. Uh, it's not unexpected because he had talked about it um, uh, sort of obliquely but I don't think anybody was expecting this. It's, 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 it's completely unexpected. I talk about running the New York City Marathon. I'm never gonna do it. <laughs> no pope has resigned voluntarily since Pope Celestine III in 1294. I mean, there's, there's, there, are not, there are barely any trees on the planet who remember this. <laughs> what, what happens now? What, what is the, there's no tradition for this. What happens? No, there's not. I mean, there will be a conclave, an election, where the cardinals will gather and elect a new pope. But there's still gonna be a pope when they elect the new pope? Uh, he's going to resign on February 28th, and I, there will be no pope. There will be what's called a vacant seat. There you go, folks. The video is glitching a little, and I've about lost all my patience that I have left, what little I have left with uh, technology. Um, so it just glitched right there. You can actually watch it. But you heard the audio, and it says, Father Jim explains the papal election process and the unlikelihood of choosing an American pope. Remember, I covered that about how there were all this media uh, bashing America's possible chances of become, you know, having a pope or Canada. And um, he's talking about election. Well, they, I mean, the next pope was probably already chosen before uh, Benedict even stepped down, probably when, you know, he uh, took the, quote, papacy, whatever. It was already it was already decided. It's just a big joke, and that's why he's smirking like that, you know. And who was he? Oh, Father Jim's actually um, a Jesuit. So then you have uh, anti-mafia police raid offices and diocese. A front runner cardinals urge to overcome divisions at special mass shortly after detectives mount dawn raids in diocese. So that's how the election process works. Uh, then you have this new pope, first Latin American first Jesuit, and first Pope Francis to lead the world's Catholics. Then we have some uh, background information on what it is. It says here, the Society of Jesus, Pope Francis is a Jesuit. That seven things you need to know about the Society of Jesus. So they're also known as God's Marines or the Company. Pretty interesting, like that movie. Um, it says here, the Order of Priests and Brothers was founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola in 1534 with six other students at the University of Paris. Um, they referred to themselves as the Company of Jesus. So probably happy that the Jesuits were not forming their own church like Martin Luther a few decades earlier. He was a rebel, a bad guy. Pope Paul III granted them condemnation in 1537 to become priests. They gave them the right to become their own order of priests. With missionary work as their core value, the Jesuits have been known for spreading Catholicism throughout the world, including Asia. It says here they took the vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience under Ignatius. They've been linked to some of the best universities uh, in the world. It says they are known for free thinking, which has helped make the university so well regarded. Then they say if uh, the Jesuits are smart panties, smarty pants Catholics with a poverty vow, why hasn't there been a Jesuit pope before now? Although they're well regarded, the or order wasn't always in such good terms with the Catholic Church. So it goes on here and it says that Jesuits managed to retake the narrative on, on that one and the term Jesuit is embraced by the order and has a mainly positive meaning, meaning by 1767, uh, led by charges that Jesuits were too influential and elitist, Pope Clement, uh, what is this, signed the Suppression of the Society of Jesus 
which was enforced in Catholic countries such as France, uh, Spain, Portugal, empires, among others, but the order was not followed in non-Catholic countries, uh, causing them to go to Russia and its territories. Switzerland actually banned the Jesuits in the Constitution, which was not lifted until the national vote in 1973. Free thinking and poverty vow says, does that mean Jesuits are socialists? They encourage toleration for other religions, uh, teach other theology and their institutions, and also believe in free education for all. Pope John Paul II denounced some Jesuits in Latin America for their emphasis on liberation theology, which focused on the liberation of oppressed people. See, so th again, this is another tactic that the Zionists use. Some people call them the founders of socialism. It says here that um, you may have heard it from Jeremiah Wright, supposedly a believer in liberation theology, or from Glenn Beck, who says liberation theology has completely perverted Christianity, particularly of the poor, from their rich oppressors. The most damning link to socialism comes from Fidel Castro, the former Cuban dictator studied under the Jesuits for 12 years. Will Pope Francis be a progressive force in the Catholic Church? So remember we were talking about that's the new word for communism. It's kind of a covert word for communism, you know, slash socialism, the next step to it. That's why they use the word because it's been tainted, kind of like eugenics after World War II. So it says here, they keep calling the modern world. Most North American church members felt a more liberal pope was necessary to herald uh, the church into a modern era. This is this new order that I was talking about. In one article I saw that uh, they were saying, well, will, uh, you know, will he be for open contraceptive and abortions? And it's just like, Jesus, people. I guess, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, who knows, you know. It's crazy times we're living in, so. Now everything's, everything really is upside down, so. Prominent Jesuit launches new Catholic college credit online program called the Liberal Studies Program. So, like we're talking about their uh, their missions and missionaries in Asia, their missions in North America started during the 17th century and faltered at the beginning of the 18th. They were established as part of the colonial drive of France and Spain uh, during the period of the conquest of souls. Talking about New uh, Nouvelle France, New France, and early Spain. And you go in there and check it out. Link will be posted. The conflict with the Iroquois, among other Indians, where they basically just them being there, all of a sudden the diseases popped up. Ooh, big surprise. And uh, the, the nations weren't even trading with each other because there's so much conflict and death. The kidnapping uh, controversy with the new pope, accused of involvement in 1976 abductions. Argentines shown different reactions to election of new pope. So it goes on and it says that the pope faces a troubled background that links the complicity of Argentina's Catholic Church to the country's 7683 civil mil military dictatorship and questions the role the new pope uh, played as the head of the Jesuit order in the seventh. During the period, 30,000 people were persecuted, killed, and tortured by the military. St. Malachi, last pope prophecy, we've gone over this. I'm not going to go into detail about it. His prediction dated in 1139 prophesied that there would be 112 more popes before Judgment Day. Benedict is supposedly the 111th pope, which is what, the uh, the olive pope, the glory of the olive, which could be for Germany, Benedict, or it could be what, like we said, olive skin, someone from Latin America. It's not everybody's mind. Why are you here? Oh, why am I here? <laughs> uh, the same question, huh? Why am I here? I'm on this website. I'm on this website, probably. Very and uh, it's all about... Uh, it's a gambling website, and it's about uh, people that uh, is going to bet on the, the, new, the new pope. If he's black, you get your money back. So that's basically the whole story. And you're rhyming. Yeah, yeah you're rhyming, but I'm just saying, most likely he's going to be black. Oh, you think he will be black? Why do you he think will, that? He will be. From, he will, that? he will be. From Ghana, he will be black. He'll be black. So there it is. Uh, there's our buddy again, Dennis Rodman, Mr. Uh, clandestine international operative coming back fresh from his trip from North Korea. Now he's talking about a black pope. He's just kind of laughing again. It's just secret code talk probably. He's saying from Ghana, but he knows. New World Order Francis, the ultimate black pope. Haven't we seen this uh, Twilight language before? Talking about the Masonic a little hand in the sleeve. And a little Isis, Horus, Seth. On 13.3.13, as the date is written at the Vatican, says, which adds up to another 13, the Roman Catholic Church picked a new pope. The Jesuits and the black pope, the cardinal who rarely smiled was how he was characterized. The term black pope is often experienced as a derogatory nickname given to the superior general, usually by the media and never utilized by the Jesuits themselves. So they like to play the name game. 
So they have a military background. They're sometimes referred to as God's Marines or the Church's stormtroopers and have origins in the Inquisition. Thank you.